Facebook Live. So if you're not able to join us, you can join us and watch us on, on, on the internet. Thir this Thursday morning, a prayer meeting will be meeting this Thursday at 10.30 a.m. That's this Thursday, June the 18th. Also, the Knit, Crochet, and Pray group will be meeting on site Tuesday, June 23rd at 2 p.m. At the conclusion of our worship service this morning, when I give the benediction after it, please wait to be dismissed. Uh, first, this side of the aisle, which is the lectern side, you may be dismissed uh, from back row, coming front, and then the pulpit side, back row, coming front. So, sorry. <laughs> I should get back over here because that's where the camera is. Um, so one last announcement at, at for the order of worship, and you can chuckle through this one too. As we sing our hymns in the worship service, I'll have you stand if you're able. Uh, Mike Dinkelman and Sarah will be leading us in singing. Now here's the funny part. If you want to hum or sing along, you may do so. The words are on the screen. but Keep your mask on as you do that. All right, our call to worship comes from Psalm 43. Yes, Dan. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this right uh, the son in law and daughter are contracted that they're both nurses at Johns Hopkins and they're on the way getting over it but Bill and Kim are just in the midst of either Kim's been uh, positive tested Bill does not know but he's not feeling well so keep them in your prayers. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 43, verse 3. O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Let us stand together as we sing. O oh, worship the King, all glorious above. <clears throat> Oh. 
our worship service, which have responses are on the screen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God as we pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. <clears throat> now that we have confessed a general confession before the Lord, may we in the privacy of our own hearts confess our individual sins before the Lord. The Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath in his holy word given assurance that he pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him ever to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do with this present and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray, even as Christ our Savior has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. <coughs> Please stand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Praise you, the Lord. The Lord's name praise. Our Psalter responsive reading for this morning is Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. <laughs> You turn man back into dust and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your suffering are like yesterday when it passes by, or as a wash in the night. You have swept them away like a flood, they fall asleep. In the morning they are like grass which sprouts anew. <coughs> For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we have been dismayed. For all our days have declined in your fury. We have finished our years like a sigh. Who understands the power of your anger and your fury? 
according to the fear that is due you. Do return, O Lord, how long will it be, and be sorry for your servants? Oh, satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may sing praise to your name forever. Make us glad according to the days you have afflicted us and the years we have seen evil. Together. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. Glory be to the Father and to the You may be seated. Reading from the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. Am I a God who is near, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? Can a man hide himself in hiding places, and so I do not see him, declares the Lord. Do I not fill the heavens and the earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy falsely in my name, saying, I had a dream. I had a dream. How long? Is there anything in the hearts of prophets who prophesy falsehood? Even those prophets of the deception of their own heart who intend to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which they relate to one another, just as their fathers forgot my name because of Baal. The prophet who has a dream may relate his dream, but let him who has my word speak my word in truth. What does straw have in common with grain, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord? and like a hammer which shatters a rock. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from one another. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongues and declare the, the Lord declares. Behold, I am against those who have prophesied false dreams, declares the Lord and related them, and led my people astray by thy falsehoods and reckless boasting. Yet I did not send them or command them, nor did they furnish the people the slightest benefit, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together as we say the Magnificate Dominum. We will say this in unison. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye that are his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as are of a contrite spirit. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the second lesson is from the book of John, the 14th chapter, beginning with the first verse. 
Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That is where I am. There you may be also. And do you know the way I, where I'm going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know, know where you're going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father save through me. If you have known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and I will, uh, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you do not speak of my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. <coughs> Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. What have you asked in my name? That will I do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O oh God, may clean our hearts within us. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in keeping your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord and knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in thy defense may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run to any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who make us as glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, vouchsafe us this day such blessing 
through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment, and light rises up in darkness for the godly, grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what thou wouldst have us to do, that the spirit of wisdom may save us from all false choices, and that in thy light we may see light, and in thy straight path may not stumble. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we acknowledge the fact that we are frail and weak. And we often get distressed and burdened down by the circumstances, not only that we face in the past, but that we face in the present. We pray in particular your protection for the nurses and doctors and other healthcare professionals who tend to the sick. In particular, we pray for Kathy, for Skip, Melissa, Destiny, Harley, Samantha, and Donna. We pray, O oh Lord, for a cure, for a vaccine, or whatever other means you may see fit to rid our world of this pandemic. Give us your protection. We pray that you give wisdom to both government and business leaders as we make this transition. We pray for those who are physically not well, with various physical afflictions and hardships. For Finn, for Lillian, for Audrey, for Donna, Norman, George, and Denise. For Gianna, Kathy, Bill, Janet, Faye, Diane, and Dorothy. For Debbie and Rachel and Herman and Walter, Donna, Carolyn, and Anne. Grant these individuals healing if it be your will and patience and strength during this time of their journey. We pray also, dear Lord, for the Center for Pregnancy Concerns for Cummins Theological Seminary. We pray that you bless staff and teachers and all that work in these ministries. Bless them and their opportunities for service and witness that your gospel may go forth and take seed in people's hearts. I pray also, dear Lord, for the persecuted church throughout the world, that you would give them courage and strength to stand up under their difficulties. And Almighty God, we also pray that you would pour out your blessing upon the police officers, firefighters, and first responders in our land, especially those serving in Baltimore City and County, Howard County, and Carroll County. We pray in particular for law enforcement officers Tom, Daniel, and John. Strengthen and preserve them in every danger, that they who protect our lives and properties while they perform their duties may so serve you here, that they also may receive your heavenly promises through faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we pray together a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, then unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love, in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service 
and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant our requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us stand together as we sing the praise song in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for our sin. On him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand, till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Both now and many years from now, we will be telling our stories 
our personal experiences of what we did during COVID-19 and what we learned from it. We all have stories to tell. To borrow a phrase from Oliver North 30 years ago, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And not everyone's level or depth of suffering is the same in this difficulty. Let's face it, those of us who have remained healthy and gainfully employed have a much different experience than those who are sick or unemployed. Those who serve in dangerous professions such as police officers, firefighters, first responders, members of the military, and medical professionals are always, I repeat, always under tremendous stress. But even they have had a higher level of stress during this time. Among our many and common, both common and varied experiences during this pandemic, God's Word teaches us how to face difficulties. While I've been preaching through the book of Acts, I decided to take a Sunday off and consider this theme, what should we learn from this pandemic? In order to learn what we should, there must be a standard and the source that we can go to to get accurate information. <laughs> Don't we all know that? God's written revelation, the Bible is God's word, and specifically in our soul, social response of reading, Psalm 90, it shows us a proper understanding of God and humanity. So my first point is, God is revealed as the eternal one. Psalm 90 verse 2 says this, Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. This psalm is a prayer of Moses. It says that in the intro to this psalm, the title, The Man of God. This is the only psalm that's attributed to Moses. God is eternal, and this truth is the foundation of why we can and should trust in him. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so in the midst of a lot of curveballs that life presents us, God doesn't change. We change from day to day, but God doesn't. Therefore, we can trust in him. And so these psalm, this psalm opens with these words, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. The word dwelling or abode is the same word used for tabernacle, the tent where God would meet with his people in a special way during their 40 years of wandering in the desert until they reached the promised land. The word dwelling place also has within it the idea of a hiding place, a place of refuge and safety. God is spoken of not only in terms of being our creator, but also having this eternal existence. Before anything existed, God was. He always has been, is, and ever will be. He alone is the eternal one from whom creation owes its existence and its subsistence. Right now, God is preserving us. Isaac Watts' hymn, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, is based on Psalm 90. Watts expresses the truth of God's eternal being in verse 3 of this hymn. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received from her frame, from everlasting thou or God to endless years the same. The eternal God is outside of time. From God's perspective, the passage of time is no more than an instant. A thousand years is like a day gone by to God. A long period of time goes by ever so quickly. Even as people, we reminisce about the past, things that happened 30 or 40 years ago. This very month, 40 years ago, yours truly graduated from high school. Like a snap of the finger, here we are 40 years later. On the one hand, yeah, it's been a long time. 
On the other hand, it goes by like a snap. And if that's true about humans, God, the eternal one, his years are endless. And a thousand years is like a night gone by. Just last night, we hit the pillow. And if we slept well, seven or eight hours went by like a snap of the finger, especially since we slept well. Time is according to the beholder. And so our God is the eternal God who can be trusted. His promises are forever true. His nature is forever eternal. Brings me to my second point. We are creatures. We have a temporary existence in this world. Psalm 93 through 6 says this, You turn man back into dust and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years as you're in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or as a watch in the night. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. In the morning they are like grass which sprouts anew. In the morning it flourishes and sprouts anew. Toward evening it fades and withers away. We've always known this, but during time of mass sickness, we especially are confronted by this harsh reality. Whether we're here five months, five years, or 30 more years, we're not here forever. We are frail. We have a limited time in this world. These verses use a word picture to describe and demonstrate how transitory and temporary our existence is. It contrasts God who has no beginning to ending to us who have a beginning, like the flower that sprouts or the grass that sprouts. It's fresh in the morning, can wither away by evening. This reminds us of a larger picture that we are not all powerful. We are not in control. Moses uses these illustrations from nature to drive home the point that humans are frail and weak. And he compares our existence to grass which sprouts and then dies. Not only are we temporary as creatures, we're also reminded in this psalm that we're sinners. Psalm, 97, psalm 90 verses 7 and 8 say this, For we have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath we have been dismayed. You have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Even as we go about our daily work, we are reminded because of the sin of our first parents, our own sin and the sins of our humanity, that our work is frustrated. It does not reach the goal of glorifying God or being helpful to others. And even in the midst of this pandemic, we're reminded of the sinfulness of man as our society is unraveling at its very threads. The things we ought to do, those things we don't do. The causes we should be demonstrating in a just way turn violent. We are our worst enemies. The difficulty of work itself bears witness to the fall of mankind and the sin and the curse laid upon the human race that we labor with until we die. Genesis 3, 17 through 19 reminds us of our condition due to Adam's sin. Then God said to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you were dust, and to dust you shall return. We are both frail and we're also sinners. 
And we're reminded of this throughout Scripture. And it rings true with the experiences of daily life. It brings me to my third point. We must be in union with God through faith in his Son to live with God in this age and in the age to come. We see that our union with Christ includes very important truths that the Lord Jesus spoke about in John 14. One point he brings up is found in verse 6 of John 14, that Jesus is the only way to be in union with God. Or Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. We must recognize that Jesus is making an exclusive claim about himself. Let's not soft pedal, water down, or try to neutralize that claim that Jesus said here. People both in the distant past to the present day have vainly tried to minimize Christ's claim here. Let me speak this as plainly as I can. Jesus meant what he said, and he said what he meant. There is no credible case that apart from Christ, there's salvation. The only appointed way to reach God the Father is through the person and work of his Son, Jesus Christ. The Son is the truth because he is the unique revelation from the Father. Christ is the life who became man, that we might have life in him. Not even death can hinder us from coming to God through him. Only in Christ can someone know God the Father, for only in Christ is the way of truth and life found. And so, whether we're here a year, or 50 or more years, or 70 more years. The only way to have peace with God is through Jesus Christ, his son. Brings me to the next truth about Christ in John 14, and that is Jesus is fully God. We hear in John 14, verse 9, Jesus answered to Philip's question, which was, show us the Father. And Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So Jesus equates himself as a perfect reflection of the Father because he is one in essence and substance with the Father. Jesus is accurately making this stupendous claim that he is fully God, which explains why he's the only way to the Father, because he's fully God. He's able to represent man to God and God to man. And our response to Christ determines our relationship with the Father. And so Psalm 90 verse 17 says this, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. The phrase confirm the work of our hands means give permanence to the work of our hands. And the only way that can be true is if we're in Christ. And that answers another statement in this psalm. Give us a heart of wisdom that we may live our lives right. So we live our lives right. We have a heart of wisdom and the work of our hands is made permanent if we're in Christ. We are fallen, sinful people, and yes, we struggle from the consequences of the fall, including thorns, a broken relationship with God, injustice, strained relationships, and death itself. And yet at the same time, the hope of the gospel is, by reason of our union with Jesus Christ, our daily bread, our daily work, both paid and unpaid, may share in the fruits of our redemption in the Lord. All of our work in Christ can be profitable and sanctified to God's glory, even if that means 
sitting in the confines of your house for three months. As Christ was raised from the dead, he conquered sin, Satan, and death, which frees us to meaningful work and service to our Lord. And so the only way this prayer can be actualized and made a reality is if we're united to Christ by faith in his work for us. It is by trusting in his finished work on the cross of Calvary and by his resurrection that our work and lives can have meaning. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, in his earthly life shared our toil and hallowed our labor, be present with your people in all our endeavors that we may serve you and work as good stewards of all the gifts and opportunities that you have entrusted to us. Help us to be mindful of your presence, not only that who you are as our Lord and God, the Lord of heaven and earth, but who we are, your humble and needy servants. We thank you for saving us by your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing together our, ho our closing hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Following the benediction, this side of the aisle dismissed from the back to the front and then the pulpit side. And you're invited to socialize, just not in the narthex, outside. Let us hear God's benediction. Uh, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.